Hey everybody, my name is Jay Gordon. I'm a cloud ops advocate at Microsoft and I focused on helping people get the most out of Azure. Um, the last few times I've created videos like this, we've talked a little bit about working with Cosmos DB and specifically uh, we were working with uh, creating the MongoDB API to build applications using NoSQL and documents. Well, today what we're going to do is move into another part of working with Cosmos DB. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an SQL database. Now I created one over here, but I wanna show you how to get started. Now, um, what we're going to do is use a existing uh, resource group. So I'm just gonna click add. Uh, I get to this area by going to our dashboard. We can click on the Cosmos icon or you can type Cosmos in here. So we're brought over to the basics area and I'm gonna pick my subscription. Um, I've got an existing group already created called JA Gord. I'm gonna just use that. Then I'm gonna create an account name and this will be the URI that we're gonna keep um, our documents within. So a host name that we're gonna be able to connect to. Uh, let me lower my music a little listening to some neurosis if anybody's a fan. Uh, so what we're gonna do is name it. And in this case, I'm just gonna call it JSQL. And uh, we're able to pick all these different types of APIs. And I'm gonna just use the core SQL API and I'm gonna build this in East US. I'm gonna enable geo redundancy and then make sure that we have multi-region rights enabled. Next, I'm gonna go to our network. So I've already created a network. Uh, it's a VNet that we have here. It's pretty standard uh, as part of using Azure. And I'm gonna select the JA Gord. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is allow access from the portal. And then I wanna allow access from my IP, where I'm actually connected from, my computer. And let's set the subnet that we've been using. Now we've been using default. If I wanted to, I could create another subnet and have all the traffic just work on that particular one. That's the great thing about using uh, Cosmos is you can make changes, you can separate traffic from say this uh, MongoDB traffic from the SQL traffic. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go to tags and I can just create, create metadata tags. So let's add name and then let's go into value and we'll just call it, uh, we will call it um, JSQL, no big deal. And then we'll go to review and create. It's gonna show uh, the validation of everything here. It shows me that um, my API is core SQL. That's what I wanna work with. So let's go ahead and click create. And that's going to start the process of creating the actual deployment for our new SQL service that we're going to use. So we're not going to be using a full SQL database. We're just going to be using the service uh, within Cosmos. So let's go and uh, wait a few minutes while it creates. And while it's doing that, I'll just give you a brief rundown of what's the difference. Now, one of my favorite places that I've worked with for years to uh, review the differences between different databases has been uh, DB Engines. DB Engines is a really great website that you can go and actually see the big differences between um, the uh, services that we have, say, for Microsoft Azure Cosmos DB versus the Azure SQL database service. So uh, we can see there are um, a couple different types of models that are supported by the Microsoft Azure SQL database that's not necessarily supported by Cosmos DB. Um, we have a SQL-like query language that we can use, but uh, in Microsoft Azure SQL, we can use all these different pure SQLs. So you can see that there's a slight difference in some of the support of languages and the consistency models. Um, one uh, tends to be, you know, more for the application development side, it seems like, um, when you're using Cosmos. And then uh, I believe when you're using standard uh, Microsoft Azure SQL, you can use it for general purpose for just about anything. I'm sure that's the same of Cosmos, but if we look at some of the major differences, it's obvious that um, Cosmos is a multi-model database. It's capable of all these different types of um, database models that you can use, whereas uh, Azure SQL is specifically a relational database uh, management service. So uh, let's go and see if our new Cosmos uh, SQL API is ready to start working with, all right? Cool. So you can see here, uh, I'm in the actual creation of the uh, database service. So it's still in the process of creating. It's gonna take a few minutes because it's going to make sure that we are uh, using a SQL core service for 
uh, Cosmos. It's going to create all the required bits and pieces that we selected in US East. And like I said, it's just going to continue to create it and make sure that all the uh, network environments, backups, uh, and everything else that you want to configure uh, will be done for you. So let's uh, go ahead and just wait another minute. And when we get back to it, what I'm going to do is start showing you what we'll be able to support. Awesome, we're done. So our database is finished being set up for Cosmos. Let's go ahead and click on it. It's JSQL. So it's a little, little different, just slightly different than what we saw the one we were using with uh, Cosmos uh, for MongoDB because we can see that there's a couple additional features such as add Azure search, add an Azure function uh, for something like a serverless style uh, function that you call remotely. Uh, but you know we still have the ability to replicate data globally uh, and create default consistency, uh, whether it's strong, boundless, session, consistent, or eventual. Uh, we talked about this previously in our MongoDB videos. Um, if you haven't seen them, I recommend you go back, take a look um, if you're interested in that particular API. But for this API, we're going to talk specifically about uh, SQL. So we've got cores, which is also another different uh, for cross-origin resource sharing. We can manage that all within here. Uh, we've also got our keys to manage for our usernames, passwords, and uh, these can all be recycled. We've talked about this before. Um, and that's our URI to actually connect it for a connection string for our application. Now, I don't have an application ready to go, but I want to show you what apps you can actually start uh, building with uh, Cosmos DB. So if we go to Quick Start, we can see that we've got just like uh, for all of our other uh, Cosmos platforms, uh, all the different types of languages or APIs that you can work with. So I'm going to personally work with Node.js. So uh, we're going to go ahead and store our data. It's going to be where our table will be in a collection. So we need to create an items collection for this demo uh, database we're going to create. So I'm going to just go ahead and click Create Items Collection. And we can see that we've got our costs. Uh, and if you're interested in RU costs, uh, really recommend you take a look at RUs. Uh, we can understand how much throughput is going to be used. Um, I will put the link to the RU information in the uh, video description below. So let's create our items collection. Only should take a second, cool. So an items collection was created uh, for us. And uh, what we're gonna be able to do is actually download this collection, uh, uh, this sample application I sh that's actually provided to you by Azure. And you can get an understanding of what's going on on the other side. So let's go ahead and download this. So right here, it just downloads a zip file and it'll show my finder. So what I like to do, makes it really easy, we'll unzip the file, great. Now you can just go CD and then drag the directory name if you're using a Mac right into there. Easy enough, right? Enter. Now we're in the directory. Here you can see all the information. Uh, now one of the really cool things that you're gonna notice uh, is that if we go into config.js, I'll just cap the file. We can see here that the connection string for our application has actually been provided to us. So we've got some existing kind of uh, structure to understand. So if we're new to building with this service, that's cool. Uh, we're going to be able to uh, immediately uh, understand how everything's put together. Um, and if you want to know more about Node.js, there's a huge, huge uh, community within Microsoft that works a lot on it. Uh, Tyranny. Um, Sarah Drasner, a lot of really great people are working in the world. Uh, Burke Holland, they're working in the uh, Node.js world. If you have questions on that specific type of uh, platform and language, take a look at some of the work they've done. It's really interesting. So we've got our app. Let's go and type uh, npm install to actually install the application locally. Uh, it's gonna go ahead and do all the uh, required uh, downloads of any sorts of npm packages that we need, uh, all of our uh, necessary uh, parts and then we'll go ahead and we'll start it so npm start and what it's going to do is just start it locally on my computer on port 3000 so let's go to local host 3000 and now we've got this demo app uh, let me make it a little bigger that uh, we've provided to you right out of uh, azure so let's um, let's do a little work with this. So uh, this to do app gives you the ability to say Microsoft is my item name and item category is operating system. So let's actually call it uh, Windows 
95 and add the op. Then we can see the uh, actual uh, transactions on the web server happening with Node. Uh, let's do another one, uh, say Windows NT4, and uh, same thing, operating system. And let's add that item. Cool. So let's go back and actually see that. Uh, we can go back into the Quick Start. We have this Data Explorer, or we can go here to the uh, Document Explorer, one or the other. So let's go to Open Data Explorer. And we're going to see everything, even though we're making the calls using SQL, it's saving everything as documents like it would, uh, say, with our Mongo. Uh, so if we go in here, we can see everything is actually in JSON format. That's, that's really cool, but the, the calls are going to be done to an SQL server. Um, so I think, or an SQL uh, compatible API. So I think that's really cool. Uh, let's see, can we make edits here? So let's call it, let's refresh this here, discard any of my changes that I made, because um, I made a slight mistake. So let's go to documents. So we'll go to the back to here. Um, and so let's say I want to up case that S for both of these. So let's do that. Update. Let's go to the other one. Update. Now let's go back to our application. Oh, look at that. So we, uh, you can see this is kind of a full circle uh, way of showing you how to get started with this application um, or I, this application and the database service that we provide to you by Cosmos. Now, if you have any uh, questions about any of this, you know that you can always come to uh, the docs page. Um, you can reach out to the Azure advocates. We're all on Twitter. Um, if you want to talk to me, I am the lovely Jay Destro on Twitter. Uh, feel free to reach out to me or you can reach out here on LinkedIn. Um, here I am, uh, Jay Gordon 42 how you get in touch with me. So uh, that's how you can kind of get started using uh, the SQL API for Cosmos DB. Reach out if you have any questions and thanks for watching.